you should give an overview of the briefing. Okay, overview means a kind of summary. Now you have to give it uh, orally, and once the class is done, then tonight, or if it is very late in India, obviously, so tomorrow by tomorrow morning, you have to write a summary of at least three pages of, of the briefing. Okay, three pages means it should be around two thousand word at least. What you understood? What is your uh, understanding of the briefing? Now, any two of you just give as a first person. So, first person means what? For example, if uh, let's say Sham is giving, so he'll say, "I am Sham. I am a senior manager. I work for Rotomine, and my roles and responsibilities are this, this, and this. Our company is facing this opportunity. These are the risks. These are financial situation. So, keep it very short and sweet. Let's say four minutes, three to four minutes maximum." Okay. Any questions? No. Who wants to start? Yeah, Miss Ba. So let me go first, but I have not structured it. Uh, yeah, so I'm Sham. Uh, see, I'm uh, the senior finance manager for uh, Roto Mine. Our company is into the mining business of uh, lithium. Uh, we are a listed company, and then we started our operations in 1950, and then we got listed in uh, <clears throat> uh, P Land, or say Poor Land Stock Exchange, in 1972. Uh, so the key advantage uh, for our company is since we are listed from a very long time. So we have seen a lot of economic uh, ups and downs. So we have withered all those things. And then, so because of that, I can assure that uh, our company is having a very long uh, prospects. And so <clears throat> talking about the lithium mining, uh, so uh, we have um, mining across six countries. Uh, right, And then we have uh, nine mines out of that uh, six are um, uh, the hard rock mines, which are a traditional one where we used to uh, dig deeper and then take out um, uh, <clears throat> um, material called um, spodumene. And then from that, we process uh, lithium out of it. And that's how we extract lithium. And then another process uh, is we have a brine. Uh, so we extract lithium through brine. A brine is nothing but um, it is in a lick, uh, it is extracted from um, uh, water deposits or say lakes uh, right so which are basically uh, cannot be used or say which are not potable uh, right so which is very saltier uh, consider more saltier than the ocean water so we extract brine from this and then this is a very lengthy process where uh, we require at least 15 to 18 months to extract uh, lithium deposits from it so majority of our lithium comes from the hard rock mine. And uh, talking about the users of lithium, uh, so we ha have this usages in batteries. And traditionally, we have been using it in uh, glass and ceramics industries, and then using uh, for lubricants as well, and uh, even in uh, metal alloys. Uh, but recently, uh, due to huge demand, uh, in electric vehicles across globally. So there is a huge demand for uh, lithium as well. And talking about our company, so we have uh, nearly 45% uh, of our sales uh, coming from um, <clears throat> electric vehicles, uh, batteries that we provide for electric vehicles. And then we have uh, usage of say 26% of our revenue comes from uh, high temperature uh, greases which are used in uh, engines and then we have 23 percent of our revenue coming from uh, uh, tires and pharmaceutical uh, products and then rest around six percent is coming from alloys <clears throat> though we have heavy dependency on uh, since we have heavy dependency on uh, batteries as of now i think that's one of uh, uh, the risk areas uh, as well as opportunity as well. Risk uh, in a sense, because if we see our stock price uh, over uh, the 
couple of years. So it has gone down drastically. The main reason being a uh, drop in lithium prices over the years. That is mainly because of war supply. And also uh, there is lesser demand for electric vehicles than anticipated previously. So this is one of the challenge what we now uh, have to face. And, and also one more thing I'd like to add on is, uh, <clears throat> So we have like nearly 22% of our sales coming from one of the leading um, uh, vehicle manufacturer. So we have more dependency there. So this is an opportunity for us as the demand for electric vehicle grows. So we have a stable cash flow for us. But on the flip side, uh, there is more dependency on the electric vehicle. So this will make us to uh, um, force us to diversify into other industries. So given that we have a strong uh, research and training facility, and um, so we have um, our chair, so who was uh, in one of the leading universities previously, and then we have another non-executive director as well, so who was in uh, was in one of the engineering uh, university. So we have good uh, R and D facilities, and uh, so we do a lot of R and D into um, improving the battery performance and also uh, in the previously as well so we have seen a lot of uh, commercial commercial applications of our um, uh, R&D products so uh, the thing over here is so from we have to diversify uh, say we have to make less dependent on uh, batteries and then diversify more into other spaces say like uh, glass and uh, ceramic manufacturing otherwise uh, into uh, the alloy manufacturing. Uh, right? So currently we have that facility or say in R and D, we are doing research on um, uh, on say the alloys which are used in the uh, aircraft. So we can leverage that one to diversify. Yeah, and then talking about um, um, the financials of our company. Uh, right. So currently. You can see that our revenue is uh, down um, by nearly 5% compared to the previous year. So uh, is the case with our competitors as well. So this is driven by uh, the external factors, mainly drop in the lithium prices globally. And uh, uh, yeah, so that's one thing. And then also there is drop in operating profit owing to uh, increase the operating costs compared to previous year and then we are looking into it uh, and then we are trying to find out the reasons for it yeah and then uh, so one thing is so though we have uh, reduced or uh, say there is a decrease in revenue for our company over the previous year but comparatively so we have ensured that uh, to keep our shareholders happy so we have uh, given uh, say from our retail earnings or say from our profits so we have given out nearly like 90% um, of our profits back to our shareholders so that they get compensated for drop in our share prices so this can be seen as a uh, positive thing so where we want to keep our shareholders happy but on the other side so we could have uh, used this for um, um, the investment in any of our um, a new business but though we can see that uh, our retained earnings uh, is um, has increased compared to previous year by 10 percent and then we have sufficient uh, retained earnings of around uh, two two thousand two hundred fifty two millions uh, which is available with us so where we i think which is good enough to invest more into uh, the r d uh yeah yes, what about news articles anything mm, okay yeah, on the news article so there are few uh, articles which have come up mainly talking about uh, the automation uh, threat otherwise i can say new technologies which has come up in the operational technology. All right, so where there will be less dependent on uh, humans and then you like to, uh, there will be more automation of the processes. 
meaning uh, that so if you want to implement this particular uh, project uh, right so so one advantage will be there will be less concern about health and safety of our uh, employees right but on the other side uh, we may need to um, let go few of our uh, employees as well in this process so considering that uh, we have a uh, high operational costs so implementing this project uh, right uh, so it will be beneficial for us to reduce the operational cost over the years so though though there will be challenges related to uh, the change management right so and one thing is uh, since we don't have a dedicated uh, it director uh, to handle the cyber security so that's one thing what we will need to address as well so we, we can uh, we'll propose to our board to uh, have one uh, say one non-executive director who is safe from the finance and as well as it background so because cyber risk is one thing which uh, um, which is like now common across um, industries and then we have to uh, we cannot take any chances here and then we have to address it yeah and also there is one more article which talks about um, <clears throat> uh, new battery storage uh, options which are available uh, right but currently our company is um, <clears throat> into mining and then we are just uh, into the refining uh, processes and then though we have uh, R&D facilities, which are into development of new technologies in uh, battery usage and then optimization. We have, we will need to make a uh, lot of investments or say capital investments into battery manufacturing technology. So, which cannot be possible at the point of time, uh, considering that we lack that expertise but we can also explore opportunities where we can have a tie up with um, the leading battery manufacturers otherwise even the ev manufacturers and then look at this uh, space as well and there's one more article which talks about careers for geologists uh, right so agree so there is a lot of demand for geologists globally given that there is a good uh, demand for lithium going forward uh, right, so our company is also uh, looking into um, hiring more geologists, uh, right? So giving good career uh, prospects to uh, the geologists as well. Yeah, and also this gives an opportunity to come up with new technologies for exploration of uh, not only lithium but also we can uh, explore other elements such as uh, sodium so which is now in high demand and also which is considered as alternative to um, lithium uh, batteries for storage yeah so it's yeah. like a product development. yeah so, good job thanks so anyone more i need uh, who can uh, give an overview you can add more points from your side also it's not like you just have to repeat the facts but what you understood for example the news article so this was an opportunity this news article was an opportunity like you know uh, how we uh, read between the lines during the analysis how we try to link it to the real world that aspect you can also add but try to keep it uh, short who wants to try anjana can you try or mega divesh anybody i mean this is not an exam and nobody is judging just whatever you understand i just want to see what you understood from that hello am i audible Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Bob, I can hear you. Okay. So well, we are doing a pre-scene overview and we'll be starting with P3 today. Okay. Yeah. Who wants to go next quickly? Dikshita, you want to try? 
just what you understood be honest i just want to see what you understood you can even see in the recent and talk I think she can't hear me anjana ms ba to be honest i don't remember the precinct completely oh, yeah. at this moment i understand yeah mega you can try we have been attending all sessions mega mm, yes ms ba you know it's not uh, like right and wrong even if some facts go upside down don't worry just have to see what you understood from that simple as that it's not an exam or something and we are not on live it's not going on social media or something so don't worry what do you understand it's your company you are a senior manager let's say somebody is asking mega can you tell me about your role and your company you just answer that question you can see the precinct and talk either way is fine hello hello uh, yes okay uh so um lithium is a chemical product which is used in the manufacturing of batteries heat resistance glass and ceramics uh lubricant metal alloys and pharmaceutical however in our uh, our company uh what is your company name what is your role where it is located okay you didn't uh, uh, hear what i said sorry i didn't hear okay sorry so i start uh, uh, from the beginning okay yes, um I am a senior manager in Roto Mind uh, company, uh, uh, reporting to the board of a director on uh, various project and uh, strategic ma uh, matter. Uh, uh, Roto Mind is a quoted company uh, located. Uh, its head office is located in the Poland. Uh, this company mines lithium for sale to the manufacturer. Or uh and uh, our company uh, operates uh, own and operates lithium mines in six countries uh uh talking about the lithium industry uh lithium is a chemical element uh, which is used to produce a battery high heat resistant glass and ceramics uh, lubricants metal alloys and pharmaceuticals uh, uh, there are three ways to extract lithium uh, that is a high, hard uh, rock mine traditional brain mine and direct lithium extraction so uh, uh, in this uh, um, the, these are the three various uh, three ways to extract a lithium uh, while uh, using this method uh, we have a different requirement like for hard rock mining uh, carbon dioxide uh, 
per ton of lithium is 15,000 kg from uh, hydro rock mining uh, way, uh, method. And, uh, and for, from uh, traditional brain, uh, brain mining, uh, 5,000 kg. Uh, is it fine? Uh, no, no need to go in technical aspect, you know how this is done. Just say about your business. How? What are the source of revenue? What are the risks? You are taking it more technical. This is not uh, uh, being asked for us. We are finance person. And I think that is making difficult for you. Just simple. What do you think is a strength for a business? What do you think is a risk? Who do you think is a stakeholder? What do you think about the board of directors? In simple, simple words. OK, so uh, uh, we. Um... In this uh, uh, business, uh, uh, the uh, op opportunity is uh, strength is that uh, it is not easy for the competitor to get into this business, and the weakness of this industry, uh, this business is that it needs a high in huge investment, financial investment, Good and. And uh, as well, there is a risk related to uh, uh, environment and uh, safety of the employees of the company. Uh, and uh, as what our company uh, operating in uh, uh, six uh, uh, country and uh, our customer is uh, spread around uh, 90 uh, countries. So uh, re uh, currency risk uh, uh, is a uh, high to uh, uh, for our company to manage this risk management. We have a dedicated uh, treasury, uh, treasury team uh, who. Uh, who try to minimize this currency risk through various option, uh, future and forward contract option. And uh, uh, regarding the share price of the company, as we can see, there is a wide um, gap between uh, the share price of the company uh, which is due to the uh, uh, less demand for lithium in the market. So uh, share price of the company is uh, is uh, fluctuating uh, uh, very high. Mm -hmm. So what do you uh, think about now, the board of directors? Yeah, I'm going to that point. Uh, uh, Regarding the board of directors, we are uh, uh, we we have a chair, a non-executive chairperson as a, is Iris, uh, who is uh, a legal uh, legal who is from legal professional, and uh, which is the plus point for our country uh, for our uh, company as. Our company, uh, our business is related to lithium, uh, where uh, the legality and uh, uh, means uh, dealing with the government uh, rules and regulation is very high. So we need one person, dedicated person, who can handle such kind of uh, uh, such kind of transact. Uh, deals uh so we have uh, uh erase from a uh, legal professional uh, who can uh, handle this uh, situation uh in well and uh, next two person is uh, chief executive officer uh sister Samir, one. 
the strength is she, she is qualified and experienced person in the chemical manufacture manufacturer uh, so uh, at uh, as we done lots of acquisition and uh, if we want to do a future acquisition in the chemical uh, uh, re um, related uh, uh, business then we can uh, use uh, her expertise uh, in this field and uh, we have a uh, one bo uh, one member in who is uh, uh, Silsila. Uh, she uh, she has experience in the management of uh, human resources. Uh, right, it's okay. We don't need to go one by one. We have got an idea for it. So what I request you and all others also. To please uh, write a summary okay yeah write a summary of around uh, 2000 words including the financial analysis what you understood from the precinct you can add some of risk some opportunities and what you feel can be improved for example the board of directors how we can make the balance and all of those okay sure. so write sure. it write it in simple and clear english and try to put headers that will be beneficial all right. Uh, good job, Mega. Thank you. Thank you, Sham. So I hope you guys can see the screen. We'll start with the uh, risk management. So risk management is uh, one of the most important. And in fact, uh, in some exam, I have seen the 60-70% question is just coming from risk management, the P3. Okay. And there are certain topics which are like almost repeated in every exam, like something to do with the audit committee or internal audit cyber security at least one variant has it okay so this remains uh, very important and the best part is it's very interesting all right so what uh, strategy we have done for this what is your plan is we have to make 50 risk what rotomine is facing and how we can mitigate this and how to find the risk how to mitigate the risk we'll be discussing in the class okay so you'll get the benefit whatever questions you have uh, uh, we can uh, discuss Though this uh, thing is divided into 10 chapters, but I believe these are all interconnected. Once we know the first chapter, then we'll have better understanding in the second, then in the third, it's all uh, interconnected. So first come first, we'll start with what is risk? What is the meaning of risk? And uh, how it is, uh, obviously we'll try to take more examples from uh, our lithium mining industry and maybe some examples from outside that to understand in a better way. And you guys can give the examples from when I ask questions, you can give example from your own industry also where you're working apart from this. Okay. So let's start. First, risk. Risk is a condition in which there exists a quantifiable dispersion in the possible outcome from any activity. There are a lot of things that has been mentioned here. You know, risk is very loosely used word. A lot of people who have not studied about risk or risk management, they'll just say everything as a risk. But not everything is a risk. There's a difference between risk, uncertainty, uh, something which is uh, unforeseen, something about the future. It's very loosely used word. However, if you go specifically to the word risk, what does it mean is where, where we have a kind of idea that uh, we know what can be the future possible future maybe it can go in a better way or it can go in a, a bad way for example let's say somebody is investing a thousand dollar in stock market so there is a risk in the worst case that person might lose a thousand dollars and at the same time that can become two thousand ten thousand a million dollar over time that is also a thing right so the most important factor for risk here is there is a quantifiable dispersion. What do you mean by quantifiable dispersion? We have, if not 100%, we have almost, let's say 95% or even more than 95% an idea how much we can lose or how much we can kind of gain from that. Let's say now Rotomine wants to launch a new project, uh, product. Let's say they say we'll go and use sodium, for example. So that is a risk but still we'll accept the risk because 
if you don't accept risk there is no return so there will be a quantifiable dispersion let's say that product fails so we know how much money resources time everything we are putting in that that will go for a loss and at the same time it can affect our reputation as well so we should be able to understand beforehand what is there to lose that is a quantifiable dispersion and there is some another term which is very close to risk which is used interchangeably but that's absolutely wrong that is uncertainty so there is a major difference between risk and uncertainty uncertainty is a situation where we don't know what can go wrong or we can't quantify the loss for example you know covid is the best one when covid happened in the start it was like everything is uncertain we don't know how fast it goes how fast it multiplies you know can it lead to death directly or it will be recover or it will just affect people with some hard problems but now with the amount of data we have that has been quantified and it has become a risk so what is the major difference between risk and uncertainty risk is something which can be quantified or we can say majorly quantified not 100% but you know, 95 around that majorly quantified so as a business we have to take risk even as an individual we have to take risk usually how the thing work is the higher the risk higher the return whether it is in a business whether it is in personal and in career as an organization for example startups startups valuation goes very fast and they collapse also very fast why because they are taking high risk high risk high return most of the time but if companies are lucky or individuals are lucky they can have a situation where the risk is low but the returns are higher okay so from now whenever the term risk you hear you should think like it's a situation where there is a quantifiable dispersion it can go this way or that way but we can quantify it we can almost quantify it if i'm putting x amount of money i can just lose x amount of money i'll not lose the entire business but in uncertainty we don't know anything we can lose everything if you're launching a new product without risk management or without understanding the risk we might lose that project or that product but the entire business itself so as a business we should avoid uncertain situation where we don't know about it and we have to take the risk situation again when we say we have to take the risky situation every company has a different risk appetite usually companies like us rotomine which are industry leader globally so we are risk seeker company it's very rare or almost impossible to a risk covers company become an industry leader isn't it i hope it makes sense now risk can be divided into two categories or even three we can break it down into three to be more precise first is something which is speculative risk that is quite easy easy to understand and this is what we think about it speculative is like it can go either way for example we launch a product okay it can be successful it can be failure rotomine wants to let's say start battery manufacturing now we have our own raw materials let's do battery manufacturing also it can go successful also it can go failure also that is an example of speculative risk most of the risk that we face is speculative risk right then we have another risk that is downside risk or also known as pure risk so this is a situation where things will go bad there is nothing almost nothing to gain from it let's say we got a cyber attack in rotomai do we have any benefit out of it let's say our uh, ceo resign let's say we have lost our key customer key client Let's say there is a fire in our uh, uh, factories. So what is this all situation? These are downside risks. These are pure risk. Okay. Then we have third situation that is upside risk. Sometimes it is related to speculative, but we can just uh, make a little bit different of that. So upside risk is opposite to downside risk. So this is a situation where we are gaining from that let's say we have got a new client maybe in just opposite right we can get small profit or big profit we are gaining from it. 
and if i go back to that investment we have invested thousand dollars we have make it one thousand dollar one just one dollar extra that is also upside risk or we have made two thousand we have made a million dollar that is an upside risk so when we are gaining from it if you are training our employees if our company is ethical it's an upside risk if our uh, employees are hard working if they are sincere we have uh, uh, avoided fraud in our organization that is all upside risk we are increasing our goodwill that is upside risk. so upside risk downside risk and speculative risk sometimes upside and speculative are used similarly but there is a small difference in that and downside and pure risk remain the same okay any confusion what is risk and the types of risk uh miss what about uh, systematic risk and uh, unsystematic risk that is calculated one and yes yeah, systematic and unsystematic risk is actually not part of this that's a different scenario altogether uh, that was done in f3 but i just give you an overview because the word risk is there so you might get confused right so systematic and unsystematic is what we are referring to systematic is like a industry risk external risk what the companies are facing and unsystematic is like what we are facing internal to the business so that is more to do with the financial risk we are not talking about a general risk that is a financial risk for example what's happening in the economy what's happening uh, with the regulations that is same for the computers and the industry that becomes systematic risk. and systematic risk is like what we are facing within the organization and that is in the form of financial risk mostly and that too that risk is used when we are calculating the expected return from the shareholders and what we are discussing now risk that is general risk so they are totally different okay any confusion in this so whenever the term risk comes means we know that we have some data we can quantify it and how we can uh, convert uncertainty to risk you know, many times we want to do that, but it's very uncertain. So what we do, we try to gather more and more information about it. Even in personal life, if you want to uh, do something or go somewhere, take some decisions. So in the start, it is uncertain, but we just try to get a lot of information about that and we convert that uncertain situation to risk. Then we decide, shall we go for it or shall we not go for it? So therefore, there is a great demand for big data and all of this nowadays, because with this, the uncertain situation can become a risky situation. And even the risky situation can become less risky situation. As a business, we want to avoid downside risk, but it's almost impossible. Let's say if you don't comply with the regulations, we will have some penalties. We'll have some problem. If you don't have proper cybersecurity, we'll have some problem. If you don't give a uh, uh, proper... Uh, internal controls in the company will have problems that is downside risk money speculative is like depending on the company's risk appetite then upside risk we want to be in a situation where it's always upside but it's impossible it's very rare that we can get into upside once we go into speculative over time we can realize it's an upside risk or sometime we'll have a situation where it is favorable for us let's say there's an opportunity in the market which is aligned with the strength we have that is an upside. So I have a quick question for all of you. So for speculative risk, it makes sense because it can go up like in our favor in upside or it can go downside also. So we need to manage that, right? Firstly, risk is something which can be managed. Therefore, we are studying this. If risk can be avoided, we'll not study this subject. We'll just avoid it. We'll avoid reading the subject itself. Risk has to accept it. And once we have to accept something, we have to manage it. Therefore, we are studying this. And this is one of the most important part of any business, irrespective of the industry. Okay. So my question is, speculative risk makes sense. We need to manage it because it can go in benefit also, loss also. But why do you think we need to manage downside and upside risk? Because in downside, anyways, we are losing. Anyways, it's a loss. Why are you putting more resources for that loss? And the same question for upside. Anyways, we are winning. Winning as in we have benefit in that. Some kind of benefit. So why you need to put again more resources to manage upside risk? 
company will manage all the three types of risk right so speculative it makes simple sense why do you think we do for downside and upside risk i think uh, for downside risk we need to manage because of the reputation of the company um that can be the critical part during the downside risk and uh, reputation should not go uh, beyond a limit in the market to sustain ourselves because uh, the downside risk will be also um, can be for the temporary time period and we can come back uh, to a better situation and maybe from that perspective we need to manage okay so you are saying because of the reputation we have to manage the downside risk the reputation and also maybe financial loss okay makes sense two points i'm getting in my mind like okay. we do insurance uh, to mitigate downside risk insurance like why why you need insurance why you want to manage downside risk because it's a loss anyways we are putting more money why you are paying premium to insurance again what is the logic i am trying to ask uh maybe to at least reduce the amount we are going to lose in that risk if you are going to lose like 100 million dollars at least by doing that we might lose only 50 not 100 we know anyways you are losing but just avoiding the amount maybe That's just to mitigate the risk uh, yes. in different form because so basically uh, you know we are trying to mitigate the losses like dishita said now mega also last point was correct so we are losing but that doesn't mean that we lose everything we have to mitigate the losses and one of the losses is reputational loss reputational risk as well but if something wrong happens let's say somebody got got ill okay we'll not just throw that person away let's let that person die we'll try to mitigate we will take that person to hospital we'll invest some more resource and try to make it healthy isn't it same thing with the business if the cyber attack also happen we'll try to reduce the attacker uh, effectiveness we'll try to reduce uh, the amount of data they are kind of you know data breach is happening or the financial information they are taking so to mitigate the losses we need a downside risk plan and what about upside risk why we need to manage that to having control on what happens in uh, you know if you're going over speed there might be a chance to hit right so okay. it is always good to have a caution that uh, we have a control on the steering that's makes sense right like for example we have a currency risk so uh, we know the uh, due to uh, exchange rate there is a fluctuation in the valuation of the currency so to mitigate that risk we uh, do uh, hedging so this is a upside risk which we are mitigating by hedging right yeah okay so what is the logic behind it i, I understood then just trying to uh, you know say in simple terms what do you think is the logic for doing all of this um maybe to align with our mission and vision okay go in a systematic recordical procedure systematic. as a company Can to achieve our goals uh, right. well, there okay. are some risk uh, 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 which is uh, attached to achieve our goals so to mitigate that risk we do uh, some mitigation to achieve our goal okay you are close so every risk will have uh, some rewards associated to it as well right? so when we talk about say upside risk so the rewards will be maximum so what will happen uh, so there will be lot of competition which will also build up over a period of time so in order to sustain whatever returns we have so I, that's 
should be one of the reason why we have to manage the upside risk as well. Good point. So same like in downside risk, we want to mitigate the losses. In upside risk, we want to maximize the returns. If if I'm investing thousand dollars in stock, I don't just don't want thousand dollar one. I want it to two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. So company want to maximize the return. We want to get maximize the benefit. That is management of upside risk. Let's say we have launched a new product, and after selling certain uh, units, we have reached to break even, no profit, no loss. But we'll not stop there. This is where the profit point will come. We want to maximize and sell everything what we have produced, right? To get the maximum output of it, to get the maximum benefit of it, we need upside risk management. Make sense? Yes, yes. Then next is risk management cycle. Firstly, whenever we refer something as a cycle means what? It is a continuous process. All right. So if you understood this uh, types of risk, then the risk management cycle, you know, 50% of risk management is done. Because now in the later chapters, we'll be just uh, looking at different types of cycle, different types of way to manage risk. But if you understand the logic behind it, it becomes easier. Okay. So this is made by CMA itself. So what uh, what they're trying to say is obviously to manage the risk we need to follow certain process but the most important or difficult part of the risk itself especially if you're looking for an internal risk let's say uh, for internal controls is identifying the risky areas we cannot manage anything which is not identified whether it is upside whether it is downside whether it is speculative for example when covid happened a lot of company doesn't have any risk management but they have a risk management when the CEO resign. Why? Because we have a nomination committee. When somebody do a fraud, we have a risk management for that, a control for that, a response for that. Because that was identified before, that was thought before. When something comes out of the box, which was never thought of, will not have a risk management for that. So first and most important part is identify the risk areas. So usually risks are coming from two major areas. First is business strategy. That is the goal what we are setting. If we are industry leader, we are very ambitious. We want to grow and you know come up with a lot of innovations and kind of disrupt the industry. Then from our business strategy, we'll have number of risks coming. That is identify risk areas. Next, establish risk management group and set goals. Second one is about Establishing risk management group and set goals. What goals we have set in? What is our risk appetite? What is our risk attitude? <clears throat> and what uh, strategy we have chosen here? It's kind of interlinked, but it's more about our own uh, goals. Because when we see certain risk, there is a chance that we can avoid certain risk. But we'll avoid it that at the cost of returns. But that's okay. We cannot just launch every product because it will give us profit. It should be within our expertise, within our a risk appetite every company has different risk appetite what tesla is doing you know elon musk leading that the risk appetite of that company we cannot compare that to let's say with the bmw or uh, toyota or other companies isn't it so what risk they will identify that the companies won't because they'll reject in the start itself they don't want to take too much risk and especially if you notice companies which are matured the risk appetite will reduce why they'll reduce because they have constant revenue coming in and they don't want to disrupt the current way of doing business but as, if you look at the startup they'll take a lot of risk because they don't have much to lose and a lot of innovation what we see in the market is done by the startups even what we are talking about nowadays too much chat gpt it is in startup company where they have developed all of this then ultimately microsoft was a investor now they are the majority owner of that now, Google has also acquired a lot of startups kind of thing who are working on artificial intelligence. This is how they operate. So these are the way the risk has been identified because we can manage only risk which has been identified or we can manage only the things which we have identified. It's simple as that. 
So once we identify the risk, next part is understand and assess scale of risk. So if you identify Mr. a risk, sorry, uh, sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Can you please like explain established risk management point once again? I missed a bit in the design. So I'm saying this will depend on number of factors. What are the risk appetite of the company? What is the attitude? What is the goal? What is your goal? For example, we have, let's say, if we don't talk about auto in general, let's say a company has 10% market share. And now they are saying you want to make it 20%. You want to make it 30%. That means we are very ambitious. So we want higher returns. So that means we have to take higher risk, isn't it? So from yeah. there, their risk will be different. And same, uh, let's say in the same example, we have another company who has 10% market share, but they are like, we are just want to maintain 10%. So they have to accept less risk. So their identification of risk areas will be lesser than other companies or will be different than other companies. So two same companies in the same industry or similar size also will have different risk to be identified and some risk will okay. be external some risk will be internal some obviously then we have to see if it is controllable or uncontrollable and ultimately it depends on the risk appetite of the company appetite means how much we can digest you know just like our appetite why this word comes in it depends on the appetite of the ceo the chairperson usually when the uh, board the leadership of the company changes their risk capacity also changes because if the individuals sitting on the board are more risk seeker, then companies will be taking more risk. If they are more risk covers, they'll be taking less risk. And we cannot uh, exist without taking any risk. Not taking risk is also one of the biggest risk. What's the point? Yeah, thank you. No problem. Then once we identify the risk, can we put the same level of uh, resources to every risk? Let's say we have a risk that a CEO will resign. He's a key person of the company, right? And an intern will, you know, uh, will kind of leave the organization. Or somebody is just taking care of the sec physical security outside. Both of them can leave us. Can we put same resources in managing the risk? Obviously, no, right? If you're losing a client who is giving us 10% revenue, compared to a client who is just giving 0.1% revenue. Can we put same resources to manage those risks? No, right? Therefore, we need to understand and assess scale of risk. Scale means how much it will impact us. Or we can say likelihood in impact. What is the likelihood of CEO resigning and how much it will impact? So we have to put resources according to the impact it will have on the business. Not everything will have high impact on the business. And obviously, every business will have limited resources. Even if it is a very big company, they cannot say we have unlimited money and resources to put on that. So there are certain small risks they have to accept it or they will have to. I'm not saying to ignore it completely, but you have to prioritize the major risk first in simple word. And how you'll understand which one is major and which one is minor. You'll do the risk assessment. Clear with this point? Why we assess the risk? To understand the impact it will have on our business. If CEO is leaving us, then the impact will be very high compared to anybody from operational level or who is not contributing that much to the business. And once we assess it, once we have an understanding of that, then we can develop a risk response strategy. For every particular risk, we have to have a different. Now CEO is resigning. Okay, we'll have a nomination committee for that. Firstly, we'll have a contract with the CEO that he cannot leave, he or she. Then they cannot work for the computers. Then even if they want, they'll have to in, uh, inform us some months before. Then they cannot work for computers immediately. And usually the remuneration uh, committee will try to tie them up with the shares, which they can use only after a certain period of time. So what is this all? This is a risk management. But if somebody who is uh, just join us and they want to leave the organization, will say, okay, give one month notice period and go, or two months notice period and go. Will you put all of this clause and make a special contract and all of this? No. That is development of risk response strategy. Same thing with the clients. In our business, we have, 
less clients who are bringing in major type of revenues let's say 5% 10% so that should be prioritized over other risk <clears throat> and once you prioritize based on individual we have to select a risk response strategy for every risk response will be different now some of the risk is health and safety so we'll do insurance that is a response and then we can do training that is a response if we think like there can be fraud in the organization let's say the employees itself are stealing something from inventory and uh, maybe the office material you know stationary kind of thing even smallest kind of, kind of thing so we'll have a cctv that's a control we have a security guard that's a control and there is a whistle blowing policy also for the fraud to mitigate the fraud risk yeah that's also a good example so there can be anything that's a response it depends on you as a business a lot of things are flexible however when we are listed there are certain things which we need to do as a government regulation and there are a lot of other things which depend on us maybe you have a better uh, whistle blowing uh, policy in your company but your computers who is the same size they don't follow that much depend on us depend on them Moving on next, implement strategy and allocate responsibilities. So once we have risk response, it's not like just having a response. The difficult part is implementing it. And to implement any anything, we need somebody who is answerable to that, who should be responsible to that. So that will do. So usually we have risk managers. Previously, we, the normal managers were expected to do that. But now we have specific risk manager, specific person uh, doing that. However, it is uh, uh, it is said that everybody in the business is responsible for the uh, risk uh, manager. Sorry, the risk management from the CEO to the intern, everyone. However, we'll have specific person for a specific risk. Then the next part is implementation and monitoring of controls. So once it is done, then we have to see how much the implementation is working. Let's say previously the fraud was let's say if talking percentage five percent was the stealing happening now you have put a lot of controls now you have to see the level of the percentage has it reduced or increased technically it should not reduce uh, increase or it should not remain the same it was five it should come down to two to one something like that <laughs> excuse me then only we can understand how effective it was usually how we do monitoring of controls we use internal audit. We'll see that in uh, later chapters. When we put controls, we have an internal auditor who comes and check the control. Because what happens many times if companies are just saying the policy, employees will ignore it. But when there is somebody who is checking the controls, who is monitoring the control, there is a more chance they will take it seriously. If you know it is just on the paper, it's just taking for granted, then they won't follow it. it's a cycle it's a process for every risk we are doing the same thing then next part is review and refine process and do it again so we have to see how we can improve risk cannot be avoided risk can just be mitigated sometimes we are mitigating the likelihood sometimes we are mitigating the impact of it so we have to see how we can improve review it refine the process but at the same time, risk keep on changing. What risk you have identified in 2024, it won't be same in 25. So you have to refine your process. You have to uh, uh, refine the management. You have to refine the control. Then keep doing it again. So it's like a cycle. Again, the same cycle will continue. And all of this will help us to make better decision making, better strategy making, better uh, dealing. Ultimately. It will help in better running of the organization. Make sense? It is more logical if you see. First, we are just finding the risk. Then we are seeing which one is major, which one is minor. Then we are uh, uh, trying to make a uh, plan to uh, respond for that in a proactive way. 
then we are implementing in a most efficient way then we are seeing if the implementation is working or not then we are not settled we want to refine it we want to improve it we want to review it we want to uh, change it according to the circumstances Any question? Everybody is clear with this. This is very important. They might not ask you directly. I mean, 99.9% or 100% they won't ask you in this exam for case study about SEMA risk cycle. This is for understanding. Because when you identify and put a risk response, so this mindset you can use. And obviously, when you are putting, let's say, controls, that time we have to see the cost and benefit also. Ideally, every single dollar matters, but to save one dollar, we cannot put a security guard by paying him, let's say, three thousand dollars per month. The cost and benefit also comes into place. There are a lot of other factors that we can discuss. <clears throat> Is this clear? Yes or no? Otherwise, we can go through it again. Yes, Ms. Ba. All right. So a quick question to all of you. You can take one minute to think, one to two minutes. Give me one risk of rotomine, any single risk. It may be any simple risk. Then tell me uh, what is the, uh, how you'll assess. Is it a big risk or lower risk? Then what response we can put in and who can be the responsible person? And implementation and, and this is, if you leave also is fine. So tell me the risk. Tell me uh, is a big risk or a small risk and what response we should put it. So basically, we'll try to put this cycle in practice. One example from each one of you. Can I start? Yeah, anybody can start. Uh, like in our company, um, uh, cyber uh, IT, cyber, uh, security risk risk there is a high because we don't have uh, any committee or person who is taking care of it so we need to identify one person uh, or a team to handle this uh, risk uh, and the impact of this risk is uh, very high because we have data of our customer supplier uh, employee so we okay. need so we need to mitigate the risk related to cyber attack uh, so for that we need to identify a person within the company or or from outside the company or we need to uh, form a uh, team who, who is dedicated to mitigate this risk because our company is one of the uh, um, big company and we are having huge data which are related to our customer, supplier, employee and Who many Who can more. be that person? What post it can be? Sorry? Who, who can be that person? You're talking about like cyber security, expert, engineers, right? Yeah. Means we need to... Uh, ensure that uh, our uh, system cyber security system is in place uh, in the company like physical or uh, uh, database security like physical security is placed in proper manner or not or uh, data related uh, risk uh, are managed by a team a proper a team so uh, like we don't have any uh, any dedicated person or team uh, to mitigate this risk so we need to find out it and establish a team to uh, uh, handle such kind of risk and uh, for that physical risk we can uh, appoint outside we can outsource uh, uh, like uh, physical risk or, or uh, data, we can uh, outsource this uh, uh, means uh, this task. Not we can... You can outsource to some expert. Okay. Yeah. 
and like uh, cur another one is currency risk so as uh, our company is uh, situated in uh, six different company uh, sorry uh, country and uh, uh, we are operating in more than 80 plus uh, company so we are operating in different currency so there is uh, chances of getting fluctuation in exchange rate so there is a chances of a currency risk to mitigate this risk we need to uh, have a proper uh, uh, management uh, plan, plan uh, to mitigate this risk means how to uh, do uh, get into the uh, forward or future contract for which we have one treasury team uh, in our company, we are having a one team, treasury team, who taking a, uh, uh, taking responsibility to uh, mitigate such kind of risks. I got you. Good point. Okay. Others quickly one one risk. There is a environmental risk also. Okay, we'll go one by one, Megha. Yeah. Don't mind. Yeah. You have to make the total risk 50, so it will help. OK, next, please, just quickly. I am giving you a start for the assignment that we have to find 50 risk. So this is just a starting point. So you will get confidence when you're writing. OK. Uh, the political yes, risk. Sorry? The political risk. Okay. The political risk because the Rota mine is uh, six uh, mine in the developed country, the two mines in the uh, economically difficult countries. So for these two mines uh, in the area, definitely there is a political risk is there. And, uh, you mean how to mitigate? I have to tell, no? Yeah. Firstly, you have to see, tell how big it is. A rotomine. Rotomine, sorry. How big the risk is for our company? Yeah, political risk is compared yeah, to because... Political, it's better if you go specific. What kind of risk? Because if you are not specific, we cannot tell it is a major mm -hmm. risk or minor risk. The the government uh, will be changed. For example, sometime the the ruling party will be changed. They will be take over the our mining uh, uh, the plan, changing the local policies. Okay. Then uh, okay. Then if you go in this kind of risk, what we can do? We can go before you enter the country. We have to tie up with the the government, and uh, we can reduce the risk. Because no need to hundred percent start. We have to tie up with the the local bodies or local governments. So we can go for it. Then we can medicate the risk. This kind of thing. even if the political party change, there's a problem. No, how we can think some some political party. What is your level... response for that? What is the response? What a rotomine should do according to you? Rotomine have to do when they have to go with the the tie up. They, they Rotomine do the tie up with the local political party. So the, the government, local government, before starting any projects. Okay. Or we can appoint a person in the board of a director who is uh, having experience in uh, political. Uh, like civil servant or uh, some political person we have one person who used to work with the government when they were implementing policies what was that person name board of director oh, I raise so
Is that senior independent director? Senior independent director, Perry. Yeah. So Perry studies politics. Uh, he entered awesome. government service and had successful career in variety of administrative and advisory roles. So he was involved with the government for advising and all of that. So we already have that person. Okay. Next. I'll come back, Mr. After Okay, no problem. Sir, uh, uh, okay. Uh, hello. Yes, Dikshita. Yeah. So, instability in the board of directors can we consider it as risk because it might cause uh, internal conflict in the company. Uh, it might also cause conflict between the employees since we have large number of executive directors so they can like see for their personal benefit or their department personal benefit just to like overshine in the company which might let down the employees of other department can we consider that as a risk yes it is a risk i mean we can uh, debate how big it is but it's a risk yes never yeah, because to that. how do you think we can assess and how we can put a response yeah because uh the likelihood of happening it it might be three out of five but it, the impact it will cause it would be major right because since if the board is unstable neither the shareholder would be satisfied or neither shareholder or stakeholder would be satisfied neither the employees would be satisfied and if the disagreements create between the inside the company automatically all of the projects which we are dealing with the customers or government everything will be impacted because of it right so do you think it has a big impact yeah I mean, it, it, the likelihood of it, kind of yeah yeah we need to because likelihood of happening it might be less but we can't totally avoid it because major people have joined the company in last two three years so they might not have that level of understanding or their goal towards the company rather than the people who are like uh, in the company for last few years or 10 15 years because we don't have any information about the previous board or how long the people were there in that board. But right now, all we have is newcomers, like in last two, three years. Even the chair or the CEO, they are all newcomers to the company. They have the knowledge of last two, three years of happening. They might be knowing the history of the company, but they aren't actually the part of company rather than being from last two, three years. So it might cause uh, difference of opinion between the board, which might affect the companies overall. As we are already seeing the low in the share price, so just to like solve that issue, there would be like large number of difference of opinion between the board itself. Right. And how we can manage that? What do you think? Either either we can have a proper uh, committee. Since we don't have an NED right now, we, uh, we are thinking of bringing. Right? Yeah, we do have a committee, but uh, is that committee is like uh, what I wanted to say is like, OK, we do have committees like four committees in place. But do we have a committee who can look after this issue as of now? Because this might be a big issue. We can even form a committee for a while just to get an NED to the company to balance that board. Right. So technically, uh, it's a responsibility of nomination committee. So instead of getting a new committee, we have every, I mean, every committee in place that is required. We can question the effectiveness of nomination community, why they are sitting idle, why they are not taking any correct. action of getting a new NAD. We can question correct. their and effectiveness. Can, yeah, correct. And we can even uh, um, make this issue as a priority of board to bring in the new NAD so that things could balance out in the coming near future. So the majority of things which is actually being affected in the company can be sorted out. Right. And it can That's affect right. the reputation also and other factor as well. So this one yeah, rest can be a lot of other rest. Yeah, because those are like, even though like CEO and chair being the face of the company, the things which is happening in the board, if it leaks out, it will definitely ha hamper the image, the goodwill, the reputation, everything of the company. And at the end, it will affect the finance of the company. Yes. The money will. would go down. Yeah. And by the look of it, also people will say this company is not balanced. 
and yeah we it is like the company that mm. we need minimum 50% so some companies have more entities than eds to show that they are maintaining the balance correct because that would be an image that the company is from so long it's a traditional company who's been in the market for more than 60 70 years and now it's losing its hope so the customer customer might also switch to better competitor as we already have a better competitor in the market who can like give us a face off the direct competition we are facing is a very good competitor who can like any time bring us down with all those things you got it good point yeah, thank you yeah next sohel who, who was next Uh, sorry miss yes yeah, sir they yeah, wanted to uh, just want clarity on mega's point of uh, appointing a political person uh, uh-huh. uh, i was looking at uh, i was reading his uh, his information he has experience from poland right but we need someone from like uh, the less developed country because that's where the we having a issue right so you you want a person from that country itself where where we are having yeah. the mind yeah because you will have more experience in that country right yeah that also can be thought of good point because Especially in that country we have more issues so we get someone yes. from there with a better understanding yeah good idea and you want um, it to be ned or ed <clears throat> NED. NED. Why NED not ED? Because already we are short of one NED, right? Two NEDs. With... We are short of two NEDs. Because when we say fifty percent should be NED, we are not counting the chair. Chair is separate. Oh, okay, 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 got it. All right. Sham, Nikhil, Anjana. I have one risk in my mind. Um, it is regarding employees' health and safety at uh, mining operations during mining operation, uh, right. which has which has which can be a big impact for us, like for auto mine in the market. as we already like have a uh, mining operation in six different countries and the head of is located in different countries so to uh, overview the operation uh, all in all the six countries uh, i think clearly they have not mentioned how we are doing currently in detail and uh, if any incidents uh, such as uh, any uh, industrial accident thing can happen in any of the location which can have a big impact all right so uh, how how do you put it and what controls we can put how we can mitigate it uh we can mitigate it by uh, just one thing we can have a number of mitigation for the same risk also okay it's not like for one risk you can put only one mitigation it just if it risk is massive it's a big risk definitely you can put number of controls yeah go ahead yeah uh we have a um, professor irish who is a uh, who's a career in legal profession so he can uh, help us with all the rules and regulation to be followed in each and every places uh, which we can uh, utilize uh, i mean we can take his help to uh, to be on track with all rules and regulation and we can make some internal review every year regarding this risk another i think uh, if i'm not wrong we have a carolyn uh, her responsibility is is mentioned as the health and safety and product quality right so uh, we can take her help also to uh, maintain the balance of health and safety in all location equally and to go ahead like in near future we can make it internal review every quarter or every year 
uh, and if any issue arises during like internal audit itself uh, we should take uh, initiative to uh, solve it and uh, to give the importance to that risk before uh, external audit highlight that risk Makes sense. I can add one thing here also uh, regarding yes. uh, health and safety. We are uh, regular training to the employee regarding the um, safety. Uh, regarding the safety. Yeah. Yep. Mandatory training. We can say we have to give them mandatory trainings. Like every few months, or you know, we can decide how many weeks after you want to give them the training, and try to uh, make them follow. For example, if they are not wearing certain gear, like for example, helmet or something like that, they are not allowed in certain area. Like strict policies. Because sometimes health and safety can be taken for granted, and employees will just take it lightly. We can have safety first policy. And this health and safety can lead to reputation risk, regulation risk, uh, fines, legal risk, and in the worst case scenario, business risk calls. Agree. Good point. Okay. Next. Nikhil, Nikhil, you already said. Yeah. Uh, so I was saying, like, you know, limited availability of the resource lithium. Okay, that's a business that so, is called together. Yeah, so we have a lot of restriction from the government for getting a new reserve. Uh, it's a political instability in you know few two countries also. The so there will be a lot of uh, issues happening in the uh, uh, field of you know getting a new lithium reserve and availability of the lithium. So we have a. Uh, in future, we have uh, we need more lithium uh, extraction, or we need more mines to get a lot of. Uh, we we want to make a lot of quantity, so we have to look at on that aspect as a risk. And uh, the technical uh, issues with you know extracting the lithium. And which is re you know, also related to. You are saying that we can get uh, more. Uh, you are saying lithium, right? So you yeah. can think we can get the license. See, uh, uh, the license. Uh, basically, uh, uh, we have. We must have some good, uh, you know, terms mm -hmm. with the government, and we should have uh, follow the, you know, the uh, proper environmental and legal aspects of the uh, reserve things. It depends upon the government. Every country have the, their own things, right? Right. So, uh, as we have you know that we have a two countries which have, which is having instability in the political, so which might create a problem for us. So we need to tackle that thing. So I am saying, like you know, we need more, uh, you know, partners for mining partnership. You know, we need to get more partnership with the. Other companies to for the mine acquisition, and uh, we have we should have more research. We should have to do more research on the you know current reserves. What we can do, how we can improve the things. And uh, other thing I could say, like you know, the technical terms. We need to develop a new technology. We need to develop a new thing. Uh, how we can you know increase the uh, production right i mean these are very general i mean we can write but we'll get more marks in exam if you're trying to be very specific with one point and elaborate that one point itself let's say right. saying that we need to be uh having better techniques so what kind of technique give that example just talk about the technique only nothing else okay dishita you want to add something to this point yeah, as you as know what we can do to get licensing, uh, we can like either like maintain transparency with the government and form a contract or situation where it can be be win-win for both the parties, for the government as well and for us. Because if, if government is getting something out of us, 
they would be more willing to give us license rather than any other company if we are giving it a more more profitable approach to the government as well as us just needed to add that part yeah but do you think uh, if government getting more profit do they agree for every you know aspect like it's basically based on the environmental thing right we are digging yeah. uh, down the right so it is yeah, it will affect the environment in if, in, if it is in india Uh, so we are trying to dig a you know mine or something the environmental uh, people will come and uh, make some issues with uh, all these things right so that do they go I for the profit uh, in an extent right yeah like profit like i even mention the transparency if we have like transparency that how we are going to do that procedure how it will going to affect the environment because at the end the government also if they are providing us the license they need to maintain their image also right they can't just give out the license because once they issue the license it gives us gives us an the opportunity to say no that we are doing something with government approved we are not just doing by our own so if we have that opportunity the government name also comes under that so they will give licensing like profit is one part giving the like showing the transparency is another part by looking into all the factors that okay this is a environmental approach this is going to be a csr and all other factors considering that and giving up a contract which is like more beneficial than the competitor one is providing yeah makes sense so we have to work in a certain way that government becomes our uh, partner our benefit is linked to their benefit then obviously they have to help us so we have to create that's difficult but if you are able to create that sense of leadership you know nothing like that it will be a risk management it will be a source of revenue it will be a goodwill in the market it will create more trust with the stakeholders lot of upside with that having said that we need to be ethical while doing it All right, Sham. Just waiting for you. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, Miss Was thinking of legal. I think that is covered already. And just think yeah. of a specific risk. Don't just think legal, political. Okay. Legal also specific. Legal, political also specific. Try to be more specific, mm -hmm. because when they'll ask you risk, yeah. sometimes the question will be very straightforward. what are mm -hmm. the three major risk of this project and how you mitigate this or of this situation mm -hmm. so don't give in like broader term like legal risk political risk reputation risk no that's wrong mm -hmm. be specific what kind of legal risk what kind of political risk mm -hmm. legal if you are saying in terms of taxes mm -hmm. will go up in terms of mm -hmm. uh, more uh, compliances will come in come in yeah, or, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. you know recently yeah. there is something mm -hmm. going on in uh, i'll give you example of bangalore only recently i was reading a news that the current uh, state government is trying to imply 1% uh, cess or some tax on this uh, delivery companies like zomato and all, swiggy and all of those right one or 2% of that for the welfare of the gig workers so that's not a good news from the company's perspective now the cost will go up and this will affect the revenues to go down the business profit definitely will reduce i mean most probably at least so try to be very specific because until we don't have the pre scene it's fine once we have the pre scene we have to be specific now we are yeah. just on the start so it's fine but i'm just giving all of you an idea because you have to start working on the risk list this week okay please continue yeah miss so under legal right so what i was thinking is um, we should have a dedicated legal team uh across uh, the six countries right because the legislature and then whatever legal uh things are there right so that will vary from country to country though we have an uh, we have a chair uh, who is from legal background so he would be having more knowledge about uh, the country from where he is from say example i think in this case he is from poland if i'm not wrong so it is very much required for the company to have legal team across Right. so the legal challenges could be like uh, since it's a mining company so there will be lot of challenges related to health and safety and then there are chances of any um, accidents as well 
all right and because of that accidents and then injuries as well so to take care of it all uh, right so there should be proper health and safety uh, policy all right and then there should be regular review of it and then there should be a mandatory training for all of the employees uh, to go through that training so every year right so that's one thing and then in in order to uh, tackle any legal matters right so having a dedicated team across countries otherwise outsourcing uh, the legal uh, to uh, any uh, legal consultancy team so that would be an, another option to mitigate those uh, legal risk yeah and another risk what i was thinking was uh, about uh, the um, sustainability and, and as well as uh, the environmental uh, damage what company is uh, prone to doing because of the mining right so to tackle that uh, environmental and then sustainability right so for environmental what company can do is uh, they can uh, do a lot of um, uh, as well as they create these forests in other regions not from their mining so that's one thing and then otherwise even uh, wherever they dump their um, uh, waste materials right i think they can also try for techniques to convert that into um, uh, what to say like forest or something so that's how they can tackle the environmental damage yeah, and we can at least start with you know tree plantation because yeah, that is some correct. basic we can do maybe in any other part doesn't matter mm -hmm. yeah overall correct. we can see we are doing something good yeah and on sustainability is one is so they should so currently i think the life of um, the lithium batteries right it, it's around 10 to 15 years maximum so they should come up with new technologies where they can improve upon uh, the efficiency of the batteries which should go beyond the 15 years or say go beyond say like 20 years that's one thing and then second thing is they can explore the opportunities where um, uh, the batteries uh, can be uh, recycled so though they cannot recycle all the batteries so they should pick up the batteries where uh, the efficiency is say even say less it's not less than say like 50 percent or something right so they can use those batteries and then uh, improve uh, the performance otherwise they can uh, do the recycling of those batteries all right yeah and then also having a dedicated um, uh, director uh, who's handling the sustainability part because that is also missing in um, uh, the board so we should have a dedicated person who will take care of uh, the sustainability right yeah good point yeah. so i hope this uh, part is very clear now we have uh, some categories now this is quite simple after discussing that this is what i was uh, coming to you have to be Knowing the categories, but within the categories specifically, what are the risks? So when you are making the list of that 50 odd risk, you can take these categories, but you have to think for, let's say, political, legal and regulatory. You can have, let's say, 8 to 10 risks coming from here. It's fine, but be specific. <clears throat> so what are the major categories? First is political, legal and regulatory. And remember, when we say it is a political risk, it doesn't mean it cannot be a business risk and reputation risk. It is the origin what we are talking about. Some of you, if you have given individual P3, you'll remember also this. This is all about origin. But one risk can easily translate to a lot of other risk as well. But if you want to solve it, we want to control it. We need to first understand what is the origin of it, where it is coming from. So political risk arise due to political instability in the government or in the country. Legal or litigation risk, may, let's say, as a legal action. Regulatory risk, obviously, from irregulations. Then compliance risk is like a downside risk. We are not complying with that. It's quite simple. We already kind of discussed certain example. Next is business risk. Business risk is something when we are referring the entire business can collapse. Sometimes what happens, a company invests so much into a new project or something new which not only fails, but it will take away all the resources for the successful business which was happening. So the entire thing will fail. So strategic risk is a risk that business strategies will fail. 
but that doesn't mean we should not set up a strategy if you're setting certain strategy there is a good chance that will fail product risk obviously product will fail commodity price risk reputational risk operational risk contractual inadequacy risk so try to see which one of these risk will fit for us fraud and employee maleficence risk like if employee do something and that will come to us because they are representative of us usually this happens in sales department they'll go and tell a lot of features which is not even there in the product they will lie about it just to cover up their targets but ultimately it will create a bad bad reputation for the business then economic risk economic risk is like changes in inflation unemployment rate so this is more to do with the businesses who are depending on economy directly for example previously we have a logistic business where we were just depend on the specific country's economy if the economy is growing there is more movement of goods and services if the economy is down it can be a problem for us also it can affect but i think this risk in a way is mitigated already because we have suppliers around the world imagine if we have supplying only in one or two country for the electric vehicles the batteries and if the economy goes down obviously there is less buying and selling of automobiles so what will happen the demand for battery and ultimately the lithium will go down and there is another risk mitigation what we can do for economic risk is to go into the industries where the economic situation doesn't affect much for example the basic necessity because ultimately if people are struggling with the basic necessity the government has to provide that that is food clothing and shelter so we can uh, have healthcare that is also one thing education is one thing so when economic situation is down also people don't want to minimize their expenses on the education of the children or uh, the health care because these are something which cannot be recovered I mean once time is gone it can be a problem where it will affect the most the luxury items the wants but when you are into the needs there is a difference between need and want if you are selling the need this risk is again mitigated for example one indian company dmart which is into retail as kind of wholesale pricing in retail so they have made a very high amount of profit in covid where companies were going bankrupt they are closing they were the one who benefited too much their sales increased like anything and that person that owner of the business was the third richest indian during covid time can you imagine mr damani so it's not like economic recession is happening or economic situation is unstable the businesses will go for a loss or will have problem it's all about how you are managing it then in finance also we have number of risk like credit risk political risk also lead to financial risk there is indirect for example they have increased the taxes direct indirect <clears throat> like i just said the government of karnataka is planning to put that 1 2% extra cess on this platforms aggregator platforms and others so that is a political risk leading to financial risk it's not a direct political risk or direct financial risk then currency risk is the risk of fluctuation in the exchange rate then interest rate risk gearing risk i hope these are quite self explanatory so when i'm asking you question i'm expecting you that you have read little bit about the industry you are reading the pre scene <clears throat> so you'll have an idea when you're answering okay even for the risk uh, mitigation is not like it will come automatic so if it is not coming you don't feel like okay i don't know i'm giving this so you can do some research you could do some reading you can read from the textbook you can do some online research technology risk primarily technology again risk can be advantage and a disadvantage if we look at the advantage from our point of view we can improve the effectiveness we can have uh, better health and safety right but the disadvantage is primarily coming from the cyber security environment environment i think is the biggest risk for our industry 
risk that risk arises from changes in environment such as climate change natural disaster or even you know pollution what is happening mining mining is also leading to pollution all of this then we have corporate reputation risk we kind of discuss this risk also it can come mostly because of environment social performance and health and safety performance because this is where the society and the government is more concerned about these are the major categories where the risk is coming from do you guys think they have missed anything else i mean they have mentioned fraud and employee malfeasance this is already discussed apart from that do you think is there any major category they have missed it's not major category it's the supply chain management we so that will be part of kind of business risk right how we are managing the supply chain yeah but what uh, risk you think mega for us in supply chain because i think we are in the start of the supply chain we don't have any supplier isn't it we are the first one and we are giving the company so if you look individually at our business what kind of risk you think especially because in the lithium is a sensitive uh, chemical product so while transportation we have to take due care okay for the logistics of the transportation yeah. of that okay yeah yeah so that is more of with the uh, transportation it's not the entire supply chain because supply chain is referred to from the start till the end of the product when it is consumed or when it is kind of uh, used okay or utilized so can we i uh, say like transportation risk yeah operational risk it is more of our operation if you are providing that then it's to our specific operation dikshita you want to add something on this uh in supply chain uh scenes are like for us the ultimate consumer is the manufacturer of the ev batteries or etc so having a no. good relationship of maintaining it the ultimate can consumer be part is not the, one second one second ultimate consumer is the client who is owning the car who is owning the automobile not the manufacturer correct but not for us like okay ultimate consumer is the client chain. we are not talking about us we are talking about the entire chain what do you mean by supply chain itself from the start from the mining to who is the end user of it or who is the consumer of it that is the definition of supply chain okay understand you are saying only the manufacturer then we are just thinking about the stakeholder is connected to us our buyer our client okay yes, correct yeah. so and that is what let dikshita finish first yeah dikshita yeah, so my, my question was like okay so we can't talk about the entire supply chain but uh, like for us for our product so maintaining the good relationship with the clients since uh, as we are like listening to pre scene one of them told like we have like 22% coming from one particular client so right. isn't can we consider that that also a risk because if that particular client goes off our 22 to 25% of business will get automatically affected and because of that all other customers will also get affected right yes, that so what is the reason we lost that particular customer yeah that's the risk i think we discussed this uh, during the pre-sale analysis itself that's a major yeah. risk how can one come when there is even a, a, a probability that company might try to acquire us yes correct that is like uh, we have to understand porter's five forces for the power of buyer the power of buyer is very high in that in particular case which is not ideal for us Correct. So that's not a supply chain risk, I would say. Anyways, uh, coming back to Mega. Yes, Mega. What do, what were you saying? Uh, 
as we can see that there is a huge fluctuation in the share price of the company okay so that means we have to see what's the reason and how I mean, to you, you are trying to link this with supply chain again or you are doing a separate risk no this is a separate risk not okay. a supply chain as we can go through the graph of uh, price of the shares of our company we can see right. there is a huge fluctuation each year there is a huge fluctuation so can we uh, monitor what exact and how uh, what what do you think uh, uh, what category it will come it will be part of again a business risk okay it's not a political or legal it's not a economic risk not a fraud or maleficence it's a business risk so I, i'll look forward for each one of your answers how you want to deal with the share price and just to give you one hint share price is one of the commonly asked question again we will again make it go down in the exam and say how you manage it so uh, write a very good answer how you think you can manage you can do definitely research it's not like an exam you have to do research and write on that all right next is risk in international operation which we are already doing and if you go into new business uh, new countries the risk will even increase so what are the basic and the most fundamental is cultural risk mm -hmm. so culture of two business for let's say a company let's say in switzerland and one is japan japan they are like culture of working six days even seven days sometime and here in switzerland they are saying just work three and a half days four days week culture i think is already out friday is the new saturday have you heard of that thing is going on social media so depending on the culture that will affect if two companies come together if there is a merger acquisition or even a partnership this thing can affect because in every country there will be a different culture of work then litigation risk fighting a legal case can be difficult in different countries especially in some countries even if you take example of india it takes decades to get the result there are uh, you know millions of case pending then credit risk it becomes difficult to get the credit when it is an over sales uh, overseas sales chasing debt become difficult or even the cost and benefit anal analysis doesn't allow it very costly then items in transit the transportation we have to Uh, spend lot of money in tra transportation then we have to take care of the risk involved in that we have to do insurance sometimes the pirates can come in it used to look like an old story but recently something happened it was near somalia or something the indian uh, ship was carrying something then the pirate just took over have you seen that news and ultimately i think the government paid certain ransom to get it off it Do you remember the news? It was like one or two months back. So a lot of problem can happen when items are in transit. If not, you can check it. Then financial risk. This include foreign exchange risk. So you have more financial risk when you go international. But the good part is we have a treasury department who is taking care of. However, the risk will increase when we go beyond that. Okay. so this is the end of the first chapter one of the most important chapter i would say because this is a building block for all the other chapters if you understand this clearly it will be easier for us to do the remaining chapters also okay so in the next session we'll start with the risk management one more thing i want to tell you is we are planning for one extra session where we'll just focus on the writing skill and how we should uh, you know uh, put your answers on the exam day so we'll just keep you posted on the group maybe we can do it on thursday or friday at least for one hour is that okay yes when is my thursday is it thursday or friday what is your availability we'll just put on the group